So you are, you are the, the, the founder of, uh, of ShareTrap. We met yes. at different places in the world uh, already. We're now in Helsinki at your, at your uh, headquarter. Uh, for the people who, do, who don't know what ShareTribe is, uh, what is it? Sure. Uh, so ShareTribe is essentially a really easy way to build your own peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. So basically we have an open source software that you can use to kind of like set up, configure and launch a marketplace like Airbnb or Etsy or eBay in one day and you don't need to have any technical skills. So basically we handle all the technology so you can kind of just focus on building your community. So you can build your own Airbnb in one day. So that sounds really, <laughs> really cool. And I think it's, 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 it's not as easy as it uh, sounds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but before we go in, uh, into that, uh, how did you come to the idea? Yeah, I think that it originally started, well, usually uh, like the most uh, startup ideas, I guess, are born from your own needs. So we were building our own uh, own marketplace. Uh, we started doing that back in 2008 uh, when nobody was yet talking about the sharing economy but it was about this local uh, community sharing in a college campus and then once we grew that well uh, at that point we could have really used the tool. We really struggled a lot like building the different features and iterating with the different things and we would build some feature and spend a lot of time and money just to notice that actually it's not the right thing to do and we should do something else and Basically, we wasted a lot of like time and money, and 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 obviously, uh, we also uh, later encountered lots of other entrepreneurs and, and realized that they had all these same challenges. And then, basically, lots of people seem to have this this same problem. Airbnb obviously has been huge, and many people these days have the idea that hey, they want to build something similar for a specific niche. So we thought that we should really help them so they don't have to make all the same mistakes that we did. So you want to build your own marketplace uh, and then you're wasting lots of time and money and you also saw other people <clears throat> wasting also their time and money and then you feel okay, everybody is trying to, to, to invent the wheel again. Uh, yeah. Why don't make a open source wheel so everybody can use it and then a lower threshold for people to start. Exactly. And, 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 and you said uh, in, in campus, uh, what you, what you studying over there? Yeah, so I was studying in the other university here in, in Helsinki. So it's kind of like a mix of, uh, it's a program called Information Network. So it's a mix of business and technology and design and communications, which I think is a perfect curriculum yeah. for an entrepreneur. Yeah, so it's not, so it's, it's not only te technical driven, but also on the, on, yeah. on the communication and design. Exactly. I yeah. think that's good because yeah. I think too many discussions are too much on, on, on technique. Yeah. But then uh, uh, you say we, uh, so, so, you, so you also have some co-founder of a co-founder? Yes, my co-founder Antti and I started uh, in the same research project actually in other University back in 2008. So originally we built the first platform for the research project and then we spun it up as a company 2011 and tried to build a, a kind of like a marketplace business of our own and like learned a lot and didn't exactly get where we were going for. But then in 2013 we really moved to this current model uh, basically helping other entrepreneurs and small businesses to build their own uh, niche uh, marketplace websites. And, and what, what, uh, what was your original idea to, to, uh, for your own marketplace that you tried to build? Uh, it was uh, more this kind of like a, instead of like focusing on one vertical, we focused on like local but horizontally. So you could basically share lots of different things in a really trusted community of college. And so it's kind of like Google Plus of, of sharing economy somehow that you would have these different circles and you would have different trust levels. So you trust your students from the same campus more than you trust other people. That was a really bad idea, by the way. Like I, Why? Why? I, 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 I what didn't work? Yeah, I, I, I don't believe in that anymore. I feel that what is working is when you focus on one vertical, because like renting, uh, like for instance, your apartment is really different from renting a power drill or offering a service or like selling used goods. And like we, we basically had all of these in the same platform. And what I think works best is that you just focus on one vertical and like one community of people who are interested about that particular vertical and then you create a really great user experience for that group because that's I, I think that's what we have seen over and over again like the really working in the sharing economy. Yeah so you think platforms who are focusing uh, or, or who are not focusing on the vertical have a, <clears throat> a small chance to, uh, to be successful. Yeah I, I feel that it's that everybody basically wants to so many people I've encountered who wants to build this kind of like a Facebook for sharing. Like, wouldn't it be so convenient if I would get all these different things from the same platform? So people would just list all the things they own to the same platform. But that's, it's just like, obviously, it's a nice idea. And if you would just get all the like billion people there, then it obviously could work. But it's just too big of a struggle 
to get those people there when you don't have a value proposition mm. that works for everybody. So you really, it's way easier to create a good value proposition when you're tailoring it to a specific audience, like only surfers or only people who have dogs or only mm. par parents of small children or so. Yeah, yeah. As, uh, and we think like like uh, big companies with a big user base like Facebook are able to be, uh, uh, to be successful in in uh, in these broad verticals, or, or 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 do you think they also have the same the same problem? Yeah, I think that well, obviously, like Facebook has been uh, successful definitely in their their own field and, and kind of like getting all people because it's it's a really different type. You don't really need the uh, offline interaction, and you don't. So it's it's more about just kind of like really free form communication online, but like the offline interaction is super different and really weaving that into the platform's DNA, how the transaction flows, at which point, what, what steps do you do online, what steps do you do offline. There's so many kind of like these intricate little, little details that you need to get exactly right for your specific vertical for it to work. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so that's also the the, the, the difference I think with the whole uh, sharing, collaborative, plus becoming just uh, how you want to name it. That's that. Uh, normally, it was with, with Facebook online meet online, yeah. and now it's 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 online meeting the physical world with all the uh, challenges and, and opportunities uh, uh, together. Yeah, together. exactly. And it's also what uh, many platform founders that I've been talking to have also realized that it's just so different when you go to a new city. Like I was talking to Joel uh, Sarah from Eat With, and then they basically said that it's when, whenever they launch in a new city, they need to completely adapt the platform and their concepts often really, really change their strategy, the how, how they approach like user growth and how even the user experience works because they just the needs are different. Like, and, and that's something that many people uh, don't realize. In, in fact, like the, I, I've been interviewing recently like lots of founders of success, successful marketplaces and lots of, what lots of people say basically that what was the biggest mistake I make and, and everybody says that yeah well I, I tried to go international too early and like everybody they are they just waste too much by actually trying to scale too fast so yeah. it's actually super interesting how with marketplaces you actually need to go super slowly in terms of like the kind of like the local and, and the international growth you just really need to get the concept working and get the liquidity and, and only yeah. after that scale yeah but do you think also the problems of, of online peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces that they're super scalable is also a little bit too overrated uh, because it isn't that easy to scale uh, to a global level and and, and also uh, when you look at the the the, the transaction cost so people that say, okay, a marketplace, they're really successful because they got a really low tr transaction cost. But I think it's also a little bit overrated. What, what, what do you think about that? Uh, so basically you think that it's uh, it's overrated that the transaction costs are low or do you think that it's... Are this low, uh, uh, the, the, the difference in, tra in uh, transaction costs uh, are really big. Uh, so of course they're lower. Yeah, but people are uh, but people are saying okay, they're almost uh, zero. But that's, that's I think that that's 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 bullshit. Yeah, I, I think that that's what we have encountered in many verticals. That basically the platforms haven't been able to actually make the transition transaction costs low enough, and that has been the demise of many platforms. So it's not there's still no single platform where it's actually easy enough to rent a power drill kind of like a from a stranger. Though, so it, what just would be it would be easier than going to the store. Like it, it would really feel like running water, like, like yeah. people like the thing. And I, I think that that's what, there's surprisingly many components and, and you really need to do whole the service design thing to really understand the model. I, I think that it's possible to get it working, but, but it's, it's more challenging than people think. It's not enough that you just put some kind of like Airbnb style platform out there and then yeah. just start building. You really need to know your audience and, and, and know their needs. And, and obviously then the problem becomes that then people in uh, Stockholm might be a bit different from people in Helsinki, so you need to do a bit, bit different uh, work with them. Yeah, so yes, the difference in cities in the same country, uh, by the way, once you kill abroad, then you've got even more uh, <laughs> more challenges in that. <clears throat> exactly, I remember that TaskRabbit, like when they were scaling their task marketplace, I remember that they, they didn't go city by city, they went zip code by zip code because they said, that, okay, so they really need to go super hyper local yeah. to get it working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 it's a kind of fairy tale that it's really easy to build a uh, ultra scalable platform yeah. uh, in sharing economy. Yeah, totally. I, I think that in, in many ways also, and obviously the problem with the network effects is also because like Facebook has this global network effect. So once everybody from every city, like and, and every country is on Facebook, then it's really difficult for them to move because they also want to interact with people who are kind of like living in uh, another city or another country. And so it's, it's really helpful that they are on the same platform. But if you're looking for a haircut, 
you don't really care that much if you're in Helsinki, like if there's a great platform in Stockholm, but it doesn't really help you at all. Like because you, there are many of these local services that you only need in the city where you're living. So the network effect of these platforms is not as strong when they go global because they need to build it separately for each thing. Yeah, I, uh, I think the biggest effect is, 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 is the branding effect and also some collective uh, uh, things you can invest collectively uh, like in, 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 in policy making, like in lobbying, uh, a little bit also of course in your IT infrastructure. Uh, these are the benefits, uh, but in the end because the transaction is local, uh, the network effect is, is, is almost uh, yeah nothing. Yeah, def uh, definitely. And obviously the, the local uh, laws can also be an advantage mm -hmm. of local platforms. So when you start from your own city and your own country, you know how it works. And when you go to another country and then you realize that actually my platform is illegal here because there's there's a whole like, different set of rules or at least I need to drastically adapt like the user yeah. experience. Yeah. And that's a huge challenge yeah. also. And now going back to ShareTrap, I think we'll, uh, we'll do <laughs> uh, yeah, two different uh, subjects uh, in, in interviews, some, some ShareTrap and some more global developments yeah. of the platform and digital economy. Uh, so you get the idea, uh, then you tried to, to build something uh, yourself, but then it really brought and it didn't work. Yeah. Uh, and then you thought, okay, I see everybody struggling uh, with building their own uh, marketplace. Uh, why can't we just build the WordPress yeah. for marketplaces? Yeah. Really short. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that definitely is, is the whole idea because uh, what we saw is that the basic components kind of like when you're building a business like this, first of all, you need to launch really fast because you don't really know. Like, I mean, you, you can have an idea, but like really often people come to us and they say, I want to build an Airbnb for X and an Uber for Y. But actually they don't realize that they're what the type of their, the vertical they're after. It's so different. You need a completely different booking flow. And, and if you build a similar platform than Airbnb, it doesn't really work. So actually kind of like, well, we, we also say because it's catchy that you build your own Airbnb. But in fact, that's not true. Like all the platforms that we are hosting, they are a bit different from Airbnb in some, some of their like unique ways. And our, our kind of core challenge is also build this customizable engine so you can really design the, the booking flow easily and also adapt it fast. So yeah. because I, I, I think that once you, once you launch, then you start learning and then you, then you start learning that, hey, Okay, so actually I need to adapt really quickly. And so this is really what, what we are strongly focusing on, kind of like adapting quickly to the changing world, to the learnings that you get from your users, getting yeah. lots of data and then making changes based on that. Yeah, and then going back to, to the point that you said, okay, my first idea wasn't successful, so we're going to our next. So how did you start it? Uh, did you start from scratch or you also used some of the ingredients from your uh, previous platform? Yeah, so we were able to use the ingredients from the previous platform because it already had this concept of creating this local sharing groups uh, or kind of like uh, the right. tribes that we had at that point. So basically we just moved that, okay, so actually we built this admin tools that you could actually customize all these tribes so they would actually be completely separate uh, marketplaces. And I think that was also the basis. So there, there was some similarity in the previous idea. So we were able to use the existing tech, which definitely made it easier. Also me and my co-founder, so we had a bit of technical background. So we were, we were both programmers, so we were able to adapt by ourselves. We were still really bootstrapping that at the time and just then get a few first projects in and, and kind of like start learning. Yeah. And and uh, and you uh, also decided it's the first day that you were going to do it open source. Yeah, so I, I think that originally also uh, really kind of the original idea of, the idea of open sourcing came from the research project because it, the research project kind of owned IP in the beginning, but then they decided to open source it and they really encouraged us to to spin it up as a company. But then we we really felt that this is uh, according to our values and obviously we really looked up to WordPress. As an amazing example, because like what they did with blogging, uh, blogging world is that basically blogger dominated, but then WordPress would come with this open approach, and now they are the dominant platform in the household name. Everybody knows they're powering like one fourth of the entire web end, yeah. which is pretty amazing. And we really saw that if we just make this technology accessible to everybody around the world, then obviously also it will it will definitely be also a good business for us because like yeah. this has been for automatic so it seemed kind of like an obvious choice both because we really felt that it's it's important to kind of like make this access to the platform like democratic and, and democratize the platform ownership and at the same time it's also kind of like a business good business for us so it's here the profit and purpose which are always tricky to match it, it felt like a good match for us yeah, and and about the business side uh, uh, how do you make money 
Yeah, so basically uh, a really similar model again that if you think about WordPress, so you have the open source code which anybody can download, uh, install on your own server, that's free. But then we provide a service on top of that which is essentially the hosting service. So basically uh, you can, and that's the part where you can just, you don't have to have any technical skills, you can just go to our shatter.com website, you can, in a few minutes, you can get a fully functional peer-to-peer -peer marketplace website. And then we have the whole admin panel, so we can just customize everything. You, again, you don't need to touch the code. You can ma match everything to fit your specific niche, and then you can even launch it in the same day. If you if you fish and if you have the audience, so you don't have to have a sysadmin, you don't have to have technical support, you don't have to have all these things that are obviously super expensive. And this is something we charge for then, kind of like a monthly monthly hosting fee for offering this service. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, uh, there are many bloggers in the world. I think the, the market for marketplaces is, is is not that big. So 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 uh, how how many marketplaces do you need to also to to be uh, to build your own sustainable model? Yeah, yeah, and it's it's obviously like a great question. But what we have seen and it's actually like surprisingly big that they are so we are constantly like su surprised by the small niche hobby thing that there are still like hun maybe 100,000 people in the world who have this particular interest and it still makes already sense to build a marketplace or maybe 10,000 even and it's still you want to build this kind of like a small marketplace for them so that they can they can interact so and and then also uh, other thing is that you have all the obviously the different countries in the world and if you have like 100 verticals and then 200 countries then that, that's already quite a quite a bunch of, <laughs> of marketplaces out there so I think so far in our hosted version where you can start a free trial, we've seen like more than 40,000 trial uh, getting started. So <laughs> we've definitely, and I, I feel that we've still only like scratched the surface. So it, yeah. I really feel that the demand is huge and there's a huge number of people out there who really want to build their own platform. Yeah. And by putting it open source, uh, 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 what were from, 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 now your, from now your experience, uh, the pros and cons of, uh, of, 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 of putting it uh, into the crowd? Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, definitely, it's it's a kind of like a bit more work. Obviously, like you need to make sense that when you are kind of like making changes, like how if people have the previous version, so you need to somehow make it like backwards, kind of like compatible, that they that the community is not completely confused. So it, it's a bit of bit of extra work, and then people will ask questions. Hey, I I want to install it here, and like how will it work? And we try to facilitate so that the answers would come from the community. But obviously, we need to provide some input. So mainly, it's kind of like a the, the con is, is definitely that you need to spend a bit of kind of like an extra time and there might also be sometimes some like design constraints or okay, we are not able to do it this way because we want to keep it open and yeah. accessible for everybody. Uh, the huge pro obviously is that the, the awareness just kind of like spreads that and, and that's what we're really interested in that lots of people will hear about this platform and, and obviously it's also kind of like a brand. Uh, brand thing in a way, in a way, and it's really in according to our values. I yeah. think it's also even help us in like recruiting and and really building our own like community and team. That kind of like we are really doing something that we stand for. Yeah, so so it, it also attracts the 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 right kind of people into your team. Yeah, exactly. And how big is your team now? Uh, we have fifteen people here 15. in Helsinki. Ah, respect. <laughs> so 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 it's uh, so that, that is uh, is also growing quite uh, quite fast. Yeah. Um, and how did you uh, get your first uh, users? Because uh, I think that that was the most exciting. Uh, you built something, and then yeah, people need to start using it. And yeah. you said, okay, we got now forty thousand uh, people uh, had in the uh, trial version, uh, but yeah. there was one. The first ten was, I think, the most exciting. Yeah, yeah. So basically, we kind of uh, followed that usual. What is usually the worst startup advice in the world, uh, which is kind of like building and they will come. Usually that doesn't happen, but actually <laughs> in our case, it's just like we just basically people uh, when we were still build you, with the previous concept, p some people just started concept contacting us and asking, hey, can uh, can I use your technology to build my own own custom marketplace and uh, which uh, we didn't really have a good solution at the time. But once lots of these people had contacted us, we realized this is probably what we should be doing. And if we would just set up this really simple landing page where people could just like leave their email if they would be interested. And we didn't even advertise it that much. But mm. first, uh, at that point, there was no other solution out there. And suddenly, it ranked pretty high in Google with like create a marketplace keyword. And it turned out that lots of people were actually searching with, with yeah. like uh, that. And, and then they would end up to our site and, and contact us. And it's just like, OK, so, so these, these people are just actually finding us. So and sin uh, even since like it's it has been our focus area constantly with our marketing, we need to help 
people find us because we don't know who those people are exactly. Who who is the next? It can be yeah. like a, a sixty year old grandma. It can be like a, a twenty year old uh, student. It can be uh, uh, anything in between from all the different verticals. We, we don't know who. It, all, all it takes is that you have like a bit of entrepreneurial spirit and you have some community and an idea and you want to make it happen. So so it's just about that when you have this idea, then usually what people do is they go to their friends and they ask or they go online and search. And we need to make sure that in either way you eventually hear, hear about us and then, then give it a go. Yeah. And you're focusing on different target groups because I think uh, one important target group are people with no idea how to program, how to code. Yeah. And, 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 and that's also uh, how, uh, yeah, uh, a perfect target group for, for shared drive because yeah. it's very easy to, uh, to, uh, to build. But I think you're also f uh, focusing on, on the more technical people who are also building new tools on top of your open source system. Yeah. Uh, so how did you manage to, 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 yeah, uh, to work with those complete different target groups uh, together? Yeah, that, that's <coughs> definitely, a, definitely a great question and something we have also been learning a lot. So I feel that so far we have been really focusing on the getting launched fast and like kind of like the MV first year MVP and quick testing. And what we have noticed is that now kind of the next step and what's our big focus for this year is to build really good tools for developers. So that kind of like after you learn from the first year, then you can really like customize the, the solution more heavily and easily and make changes fast and, and really build the kind of like the ideal flow you need. Yeah. So, so we are really now building lots of developer tools and, and systems that are making, making things more easy there. So, so but this is, has been the bad path that we started from the value proposition of super easy setup. And now we are gradually moving towards more professional stuff and things you need when you really scale and, and, and are building a successful business. And, and, and uh, there are also now quite some plugins you can download so that are built by other people uh, for, 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 uh, for shared drives. Yeah, so we don't really have, so that's one, one, one area that it has still been lacking. Like we haven't yet been able to build this kind of like a plugin directory like WordPress uh, has. And we haven't, we are not, and, and probably we are not going to build it exactly the same way. It's going to be uh, done a bit differently through an API, but this is definitely one of the aspects that we want to tackle next, mm. that we really want to have a community of developers and, and like and, and application uh, companies and software as a service companies who can just easily integrate their solutions to our system. And so then basically we can have the network who is helping our customers to succeed. Yeah. And uh, 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 the lesson of your first company was don't go too broad uh, and, and say niches. Uh, but when you go to share tribe, uh, you can put everything you want. So uh, are you also providing with templates or ride sharing templates or uh, cleaning co-op templates or I don't know, whatever. Uh, so people uh, uh, don't need to start from scratch and need to reinvent the wheel themselves. Yeah, uh, there also like we have, uh, and, and that's, that's also definitely been a challenge for us to accommodate also. So obviously it's easier for us since we don't need to tackle the community part, which usually most uh, well, most of the work for somebody who's building a marketplace business, it goes into managing the community. So we, we can build well, like a more flexible solution that tackles different verticals since we're only focusing on the technology. But still, we have learned that we also need to focus. So for instance, ShareDrive isn't really a good tool if you want to build like a marketplace like Amazon for <laughs> kind of like a multiple companies are selling their products. So. There are some other solutions that are good for that. You shouldn't really use us, uh, us for that. We are really actually, actually even more strongly focusing on kind of like uh, services and especially location-based services and rentals than, and where the heavy components are kind of like the calendar and scheduling. So the time, time and location aspects of that and which are kind of like, and, and, and we feel that, uh, that this, this is kind of like, uh, for instance, this year, we are really focusing purely on this segment to really kind of like provide good user experience for them and, yeah. and, and like having a, having a great template for them. And uh, because uh, a, a, a schedule platform is more than only technique, uh, I think the biggest mistake many corporates make, they think, oh, we, we're going to build our own ride sharing of car sharing platform and then they invest 1,000 euro in developers and then there's a beautiful platform and then nothing happens. Yeah. Uh, I also see you really busy with the Shared Academy. I think that's also the reason why you're doing that. So how do you manage to, because uh, the, uh, I think the level or, or, or the knowledge level and experience level of your user is quite low mm. uh, on average um, yeah. uh, in how to make a successful marketplace. Yeah. Uh, so how do you educate and how do you help them to make also a successful 
marketplace because also your business model, if they're yeah. all making a nice uh, platform but, but, but when nothing work, they will all leave you in, uh, in, in three or six months. Yeah, totally. And I, like we, we really started thinking about our product as, as technology and, and now we actually think it more of as a method, like a method of building a successful marketplace. It's obviously, we have ourselves learned so much. We built marketplaces for oh, almost 10 years now and like there's so much, so much there to learn. And essentially, we are kind of like building that all, all into the product. So it's, it's all about, well, quite often we say to people when they come to us that, hey, actually, you shouldn't really build the platform yet. You should first, you should really do these validation steps. You should talk to people like before actually launching any platform, you should validate the concept. And we are really trying to it in a bit similar way than how lean startup works. So we kind of like have this lean marketplace concept, essentially. These are usually the steps that you should take to learn as fast as possible, to validate the concept as fast as possible, get up and running as fast as possible. And, and we really try to build the, also the technology so that it supports this type of approach and it's kind of like constantly saying, in the future, I imagine that we'll have some like marketplace analytics, which will compare the data of your platform with the data of another platforms. And then we will say, hey, it seems that now you are kind of like you have issues with uh, you have nice amount of users coming in, but you have some problems with liquidity. So people are not really completing transactions. So you mm. should probably try this or that. And this kind of like a basically provide the advice because obviously that's ultimately the product that we want, that we want people to succeed with their platforms. Otherwise, we don't have a business. Yeah. So that's the, definitely what we are fo fully focused on. Yeah, and probably that's also a new part of your business model, uh, this, uh, consultancy, but also maybe some 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 data analysis uh, of the uh, of the of the users. Yeah, definitely. There's uh, obviously there's lots of lots of interesting things we are, we can do there and provide a lot more value as we are constantly getting lots of interesting data. And and I, I think that we can use this data in a way that will will benefit everybody. And and, and that's that's definitely something we are really interested in. Yeah. Uh, and 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 uh, you're now live for how many years? Uh, 2013, 14. You yeah, started. Yeah. So the I would say that well, the company has been around since 2011, but we had a bit different concept. Mm -hmm. So the current uh, current platform where you can just go to online and, and launch your site in five minutes. So that we launched in November 2014. Yeah. So it's been how much? Two and a half two years and a half now. Years, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. Quite a while. Cool. And. Um, uh, uh, can you also share some figures about how many uh, marketplaces are, 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 are now uh, behind uh, the, uh, the trial periods? Yeah, sure. So we have now uh, 700 uh, paying customers right now. They come from 50 different countries around the world. So actually, we don't have a huge market here in Finland, so it's only 2% of, of everybody. So uh, most of them, I, I'd say like 35% come from US. And then after that, uh, Australia, Canada, UK, Germany, France, Spain, so the big kind of like big Western markets. So yeah. we don't, uh, there's huge demand coming from China, India, uh, Brazil, uh, Nigeria, places like this, but we are not yet fully equip equipped for those. So we don't have like good payment solutions and other things for those. So, but there would be so many opportunities and, and we hope to go there eventually too. Yeah, because uh, talking about payment solutions, how how do you uh, facilitate that? Like in the Netherlands, we're all using Ideal, yeah. uh, and, and many people they don't have credit cards. So how do you? Uh, yeah, because that's that's all, I think also the challenge. Uh, uh, a part of the, of the concept is is really hyperscalable. Yeah, but you also need to have some adaptation to the local local markets. Yeah, def that's definitely, and I, I think it has been kind of like one one reason that we haven't been able to scale all the support, uh, and we definitely realized that we need to focus on certain markets. So as an example, we don't have like a that many customers in Netherlands yet because we haven't been able to support Ideal so far. Uh, now we're actually integrating Stripe, which now has Ideal like integration today built in. So they just like released it this year. So this will make it even easier for us to also support the Netherlands use base. But but still, I think that for now we are pretty focused on the kind of like the Western European markets plus uh, North America plus, plus Australia because these are the easiest market from a regulatory standpoint, from like the payment standpoint, from technology standpoint for us to us to support and, and obviously there's plenty of demand and we, we just cannot like we, we really need to take our own medicine and not not try to do uh, everything at once but really focus. Yeah. And and what are your biggest challenges right now? I think it's uh, all comes back back down to the helping people succeed. So this is definitely something that we are seeing that lots of people come to us and they they kind of like they, they, they want to build a platform, but they maybe the idea is not that solid or maybe the idea is actually really good, but they just 
kind of like don't have all the knowledge and we're trying to educate them but but with we and, and sometimes obviously also like people just don't have the patience and, and they don't really realize what it takes. It is not something that you can actually build a successful business in one year. Like in most cases, marketplaces take like three to four years before you can really like get it get it going. That's what, what it took for like Airbnb and, and most of the other players. So so you really need a lot more patience than in with compared to many other like online businesses and that's uh, that's obviously a struggle and, and like as something we are constantly working on like how can we better help people not all, only with the technology but also with the business side yeah and um hey, uh, you're talking about the airbnb or the, or the uber of, of x so we all and we all don't get that because everybody knows what what airbnb and uber yeah. is i i don't think if you want to be be, uh, be compared with uber but that's another discussion yeah. i guess <laughs> um but uh, I think with the with the sharing and collaborative economy, we're now at a time where we can go two directions: uh, yeah. hyper central and powerful, or hyper local. Uh, I think ShareTribe is, is a great tool for the second option. Yeah. Um, how do you see all these the, the, all these developments are going? You're also uh, 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 involved with the uh, platform co-op uh, movement. So, 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 what is your vision about the decision we need to make to also make this? Uh, development a sustainable uh, development yeah i i, I do think uh, and i i think that there's well obviously <laughs> it's a that's also like what i hope and and obviously you don't you shouldn't kind of like confuse what you really hope to happen to what you actually believe what will happen because i'm so I, i'm definitely like biased in there but i i, I also think that they are it, it's pretty reasonable idea that we are actually headed towards not uh, really the centralization that we would only have like a few platforms, but actually more kind of like an unbundling would be maybe the right word. So, uh, for instance, the lots of venture capitalists have lately been discussing that the, uh, like the Union Square Ventures and Brad Burnham from there recently mentioned that that he feels that current platforms are extracting a bit too much, and in the future we are going to see this unbundling, and and we are going to see the skinny platforms that extract a bit less mm. value. And he has mentioned that this happened originally with internet. Like in the beginning, you would have to access it through like AOL and all these other big players, and they were ha having proprietary. And then at some point, you would just like have uh, all these open protocols, and suddenly like internet and email was accessible to everybody, and you wouldn't have yeah. to have to pay for it the same way, same way anymore. And it has happened to several other industries in uh, in the history of technology. And and I, I really see that it will happen here again, like again because of the local network effects. So and, and because of this other phenomenon that we are now seeing that that kind of like it, it just makes so much sense to focus only in one vertical and serve that vertical really well. So constantly what we're seeing is that successful marketplaces focus even narrow verticals and because it's so hard to kind of like facilitate the transaction and then serve your community if you're targeting everybody. Yeah. So I, I think that all these trends uh, that we are seeing are really playing into that we will see more uh, kind of like actually a bigger group of these uh, local marketplaces that are really uh, providing a really great ex user experience for like a so small number of people and and I actually don't think that that many of them obviously not all of them will be interesting for VCs but like as uh, as this technology matures and as the interest of users also like pe people already know these concepts then you don't have to spend all those dollars just to yeah. change the culture and, and do all the, those things so then then you can actually build this type of business with little uh, less money. Yeah, I think it was uh, one of the vice presidents of, of BMW said, okay, let uh, Uber spend some billions of, uh, of, of dollars in changing people's behavior, yeah. um, um, uh, ordering a, 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 car, a car to an app, and then we will come in and make a, a much bigger, a better and cooler products. Yeah. Uh, I think, and, and I think also that's also uh, one of the roles of share tribe in this. Uh, what I always use as an example is like peer to peer, uh, 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 car rental companies like Snapcar Netherlands, uh, it's, yeah. it's a big one. Uh, their ambition is to be the biggest in Europe, but in yeah. the end, I will never cycle more than five minutes to get a shared car. Yeah. Uh, so what do they offer? They offer the, the software, uh, the insurance, uh, the reputation systems, uh, and the critical mass. Yeah. And the software, we got shared, right? Yeah. Uh, the uh, insurance, in Netherlands, you see all the insurance there first, they were working together with uh, the, the platforms. Why? To learn. But now they're all uh, doing new new experiments, uh, putting the sharing insurance into the hands of the people, yeah. because that's a much bigger market than only the platforms. Uh, the reputation systems uh, we've got uh, like uh, Dimly in 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 uh, in um, 
uh, Copenhagen I also yeah. interviewed and, and you also met, yeah. met Sarah. Uh, so there will also be more external reputation uh, tools and plugins yeah. uh, and the critical mass. If you're just a local, you don't need so many people to have a, a working model. So, yeah. so I, I think th these are all signs that there is a good uh, 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 opportunity for a more local and decentralized yeah. market. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. And especially then if you combine it with the fact that if you are a VC funded platform, you really need to strive for high profits because you also need to eventually move lots of that money to the shareholders. Yeah. But if, and, and that I think is the promise and potential of the platform co-op, that if you have like a more lightweight organization that is actually running the platform, you need to extract a bit less, you can have lower commissions. So then, and, and, and when pe these people, many people are in, like depending on their entire livelihoods on this platform. So if you can actually get it like 5% cheaper, that it's, it's a really strong incentive to actually make the, make the switch. So that's really yeah. the classic Jeff Bezos saying like, your margin is my opportunity. I really see that this is the opportunity of the platform co-op movement. Yeah, but I'm still talking about platform co-ops. So, 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 so uh, corporations like taxi drivers who are investing in their own uh, in their own uh, uh, technology in their, in their own platform. Uh, what I see happening is that, and I think I think we need to find a kind of best of both worlds model uh, because the VC uh, uh, funded platforms they are they're really focusing on, of course, short term uh, profits, but also on the uh, end user. Uh, but but I guess that the platform co-ops they're they're they're, they're focusing that on the <coughs> supply of the platforms because yeah. they're the stakeholders, uh, and I also see everybody reinventing the wheel. Uh, and I think when everybody is reinventing the wheel, they will never be able to build a good alternative to the VC funded platforms yeah. uh, because they see really crappy. Uh, also, like uh, with Green Taxi, respect what they're doing, but when you watch their website, it's just a really crappy, bad design website. Yeah. Uh, and in the end, I think the end uh, user will only go for the best solution. Yeah. And so, so, so uh, fair will never be uh, enough added value for people to uh, to to change their behavior. So, yeah. so what do you think? And, and of course, uh, share type uh, could be a, a good solution for that. But also beyond share type, what do you think are things we can uh, 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 invent uh, or agree uh, that we also can make all these small initiatives uh, stronger together to also build a fair alternative? Yeah. I definitely think that you need to have this kind of like an ecosystem that is, is helping each other out. And so kind of like, obviously technology is one part that you need to really get the cost of, of developing the platform technology and specifically develop great, offering the similar great user experience than Uber and Airbnb do. And you do need to make that cheaper. But obviously it's also possible because you can see how this model works and, and like once you, and, and then you can kind of like, adapt based on that and obviously that's what we are doing is the, in a way that kind of like when the same technology is being utilized by a thousand different platforms then they don't need to reinvent everything and you can build a great user experience with uh, with a far uh, essentially like 1000 of the of the kind of cost like mm -hmm. if, if it's like split between thousand and I think the same goes for kind of like processes like when you codify uh, these processes and understand how they work and also when more people when I know how it works, then then you can is a, is essentially create these guides and, and these tool books. So kind yeah. of like people do that. And also when you have a network of people who have who have done it before and and, and, and they, they can show how it works and you connect that community, then I, I think that that's, that's exactly what we need. Yeah, but I think that's the ideal situation. What by now is happening is that it's, it's the same like also in, in, in the global sharing economy. Yeah. They're all entrepreneurs. They're all really enthusiastic about their own business. Yeah. So they're all really looking uh, to their own projects and they forget to 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 to, to look uh, outside. And also what's one of the problems with the, uh, what, what they also thought with the, uh, the Platinum Co conference in New York uh, last November 2016, uh, that the people who are giving money to the Platinum Co, uh, one of the conditions of giving money was okay, but you're not going to share anything. Mm. So, uh, so I think we, we need to, to, to really uh, address the added value of sharing uh, and, and collaborating uh, uh, really to all the stakeholders because, because now they don't see it. Yeah, but that's, that's that's my opinion. And but but also, if you look to to share tribes, uh, so it, now it's it's a traditional corporation. Yeah, yeah. Do you also think about okay, maybe we can build maybe with blockchain technology? I don't know. And let's put the blockchain also into yeah. the the interview. Um, a more also decentralized owned 
platform uh, or, 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 or company uh, of, uh, of virtual shared drive. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that that's a super interesting. I think ultimately the ideal model of ownership for shared drive would be that it would actually be owned by the very people who are using the software. And now, obviously, like when we uh, started this company like five and a half years ago, it didn't really occur to us that, that there, there was no such thing as a platform co-op and we didn't, we didn't even think about the co-op model. But the more I'm kind of like uh, gotten into it, I, I definitely think that it, it makes a lot of sense. Now, obviously, we, are, we have a kind of like a different approach because we are the software we, we build is commons. So it's not really owned by us. So mm -hmm. in a way, the software is already owned by uh, by kind of like everybody who is who is using that so and, and we are approaching it from a different way but I ideally uh, we will at some point find a good way whether using blockchain or some other way to actually share the ownership and governance of this yeah. organization also because I, I think that ultimately I, I feel that if we would kind of like uh, <laughs> essentially like if we would be owned fully by VCs <laughs> and, 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 and co-public I think that also we wouldn't be very credible <laughs> in, in actually offering the technology solutions that will kind of like help people to kind of like ta tackle these like VC funded players. So we really yeah. need to also also kind of like drink our own medicine there too. Yeah, but I think it's it 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 will also make it uh, it also helps to be successful because I think with shared ownership come also shared responsibility. Uh, so then the platform they're they're not, they're not only customer of you, but they also are uh, yeah involved in, in in the ownership and also in the yeah uh, in the in the development of, of the uh, of the of the company. So so I think it's 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 it, it's it it will work on on different ways. But I also think it's good that you uh, are not doing this right now. Yeah. Because that was also one of the biggest lessons of Matan, uh, the founder of Lazus, the, uh, the, 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 the Uber uh, uh, blockchain uh, competitor. Because uh, what his biggest lessons learned was why Lazus didn't, didn't work was they were uh, uh, experimenting uh, with blockchain on the ownership model and also on the execution level. Yeah. And they said, uh, you can't uh, experiment on too many lessons. So you need one stable uh, pillar. Yeah. And uh, because else it it, uh, it will never work. Yeah. So, so I think it's also good that maybe you wait for a couple of years. Yeah. But and I, for instance, right now regarding platform co-ops, that I, I see that one problem is that there are lots of these enthusiastic people who want to build a platform co-op, but then they want to tackle Airbnb or Uber head on and say, yeah, we're just going to build a cooperative version of these platforms and we are directly going to go global. Mm. And And what I actually think that there's so much more potential in that you again you really target some small vertical in one country and, and somewhere where the network effect is local like maybe or only the home cleaners kind of like in in london and so on and then you kind of like focus on on that group and maybe you even don't necessarily have to have this ambition to scale because i think that, that many platform co-ops will face the challenge of actually scaling huge but also why should they need to like isn't that the point that kind of like you build this sustainable local business that can also uh, generate meaningful revenue for everybody who is in it like and provide the livelihood it really doesn't need to be huge and then you just kind of like a, create a network uh, of of these businesses and i i i really hope that that's that's kind of like and, and i also see that there are already these existing kind of structures that there are all these funds for contractors and or kind of like certain kind of like non-profits and and these communities already and and, and obviously there are existing worker co-ops yeah. and it might actually be that the where this change could come from is that not about kind of like platforms becoming co-ops, but more just kind of like co-ops become, become exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think that, that sounds logical. And I also believe in, in essential, I see many people building uh, new tools uh, against Uber or whatever. So, uh, there's also a nice, really nice decentral uh, uh, insurance solution in the Netherlands, uh, Common Easy. And they say, we want to kill Achmea because Achmea has the biggest insurance in the Netherlands. And I say that that's completely, the, the, the product is very interesting. But I think the, the biggest mistake you, uh, you can make is not trusting on your own uh, strength. Uh, it's about the, the Hillary Clinton Trump. Uh, the only thing that Hillary could say, oh no, he, but he is a, uh, uh, is, uh, is a bad candidate. Okay, but what is your strength? And that, 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 that's also the, 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 the mistake I think platforms are making who, uh, who are saying, okay, we are, want to beat Uber. I think, okay, just start with your own strength yeah. and then you will beat them. Yeah. Uh, but if your goal is to beat them, then you will never be successful. Exactly. 
it's uh, and let's say uh, because I interviewed I think about one and a half year ago so so we're now one of year further and we already met in different places I, I yeah. don't remember wherever uh, you, you're everywhere <laughs> uh, if we're going to interview if we do a talk in in uh, in, in two years uh, where do you stand yeah I definitely think that the big big goal is that I really hope that we actually see quite a few of uh, platform go up businesses, uh, labor or rental platforms that are really successful business wise. They are act they are really people are getting their livelihoods on those and they are powered uh, by our technology. So from our perspective, this is a really strong focus. Uh, platforms that are gov governed uh, in, uh, in a fair way and kind of the, where the profits are shared in a way, fair way. And we want to uh, we want to kind of like help those people and, and those platforms to succeed and, and, and really build good businesses and that's our strong focus so so definitely that's that's my goal and in, in two years we we will have some really good examples of those okay not great then we'll do the talk again in two years yes and in between i will see you probably in new york in november yeah def definitely okay. and, and okay. then you can hold me accountable if that hasn't <laughs> happened so i will yeah <laughs> drop me in it all right okay. thank you very much no, thanks a lot